Welcome. Welcome to the West Highlands of Scotland, more specifically Kinloch Horn. In the intro to the video there you saw us leaving Malaig, getting the ferry across to Inveree and what a day, what a place, how beautiful it really is and this is Scotland, I'll take this, I will take this. So I am here for the Beyond the Ultimate Highland Ultra which is a three-day ultra marathon and I'm here as part of the staff setting up before the event. So this will be a little bit of a behind the scenes video of the event. The event starts in approximately four or five days time. It's now Saturday the 22nd I think <laughs> of April 2023 and as I say I'm here at Kinloch Horn in the van and this is camp number two. So I've got around about 50 or so Van Gogh tents to set up and then three or four other larger event shelters. So it's gonna be a nice day or so here pitching uh, to my heart's content, but what a beautiful place. As I say, in the intro to the video you saw us there in Inveree and well, it was so, so beautiful on the Noidart Peninsula there. Um, such an idyllic place. You can only access it via the boat, the uh, Western Isles Ferry, or we used the, um, the ship or the, the boat, um, Spanish John, to bring the van across and bring various supplies over. So it's going to be a really great few days and my first time on the Highland Ultra since I got the job with Beyond the Ultimate and the Spine Race. So yeah, looking forward to this one. So I think while the weather is nice, make hay while the sun shines, they say, I'm going to try and pitch 50 tents just there. Let's see how it goes. Chris and I pitched 25 tents in about two hours this morning at the, uh, the beach there at Inveree. So it'll probably take most of this evening and then most of tomorrow as well. But after this, I'm going to head back around to Malague again and get the boat across in time for the start and when the runners arrive. No tan like the present. Let's do it. There's the first three. Let's lay them out somewhere over here. One down, 49 to go. Should help me get my spacing. Twenty-two done. I was going to get to twenty-five, but the light is fading, so I wanted to do a quick update before we lose it too much. It's just disappearing off the top of the hill there. It really is so peaceful. We've got some friends. It's just gone nine o'clock and I've had some food so I think I'll call it a night for tonight and pick up where I left off in the morning. So many stars last night uh, when we are at Inveree. Hopefully similar tonight. It's looking pretty clear. Reinforcements have arrived. This is the, the military tent going up now. It's a beast. There's the uh, one of the bell tents in the background that we've just pitched. Let's do it. Here we are. Almost finished. And we are finished. 40 something tents set up. We've still got a few over in Inveree which we need to bring across and add to make it around about 51 or 52. Two bell tents and the army tent 
partially set up. Let's get around to Malague. We're a day early. Um, with when reinforcements arrived, we knocked that together in no time. But I think because the weather was nice last night, it was a wise idea to crack on. Let's do it. back back at Inverary back on the end of the Noidart Peninsula and we've got a bunkhouse tonight so a respite from the tent not like my tent to be honest it's been all right today is the day time to set the big stretch tent up on the beach here Long Beach in the re the beautiful night art picture. And it Just out on the course on day one's route, and we just recorded a bit of an intro. Look at the views that the Delta around the coast there to the north. Behind me is probably one of the most spectacular mountain ranges in the whole of the UK, the Colin Ridge. On the Isle of Skye. Months ago, I sat at a desk. Yeah. As you get further around to the other side of the coast, there's a good chance of seeing otters out and about as well. It's absolutely awesome. The one that's right there in the middle, which you'll probably see on right, is actually called Ben Boot. Uh, no, sorry, Nial Boot. Yeah. yeah, so Nial is like a sort of rounded mountain. What a fantastic few days it's been. Tent pitching, heading over on the uh, Western Isles Ferry to collect the runners this morning and registration, everyone's had kit check. Um, we've had a few talks in the event shelter there. It's been amazing. This is my first Highland Ultra experience since um, I got the job with Beyond the Ultimate and the Spine. So yeah, so great to be here. I've said this already probably to you, but yeah, it's amazing. Such a great place and tomorrow, the runners are going to be setting off. I'm just up there, heading around 
the peninsula there and then heading over Mambarrasdale to Kinlochorn where we set the tents up the other day. I'm looking forward to it. I'll be out on the course as well and hopefully walking from here all the way over so we'll get some videos and some pictures of the surrounding area. This is going to be good. <laughs> there goes the star of the show from tonight's talk, Steve, the rescue dog from Manchester who's been here like three days and he is living the dream now. Good morning. Today's the day. This is it. This is what all the preparation has been about for the last few months and the setup over the last few days. It's go time. Day one of the Highland Ultra 2023. So it's going to be a really good stage for them. Um, I'm going to be taking Will, the photographer, at Boldly Go on all good, so good social networks. Link in description. Uh, I'll be taking him ahead of the pack in a four-wheel drive and then we're going to come back, sweep the course a little bit and then I'm going to be walking over to Kinloch Horn around about 25k, something like that. I'll be with Jack, one of the medics, and uh, Jamie rather, sorry, and um, Nick, the course director. It's going to be a good day. Stunning. It's a wee bit cloudy today. Not quite as nice as it's been over the last week or so, but we've had a nice dusting of snow. So there are some white snow-capped peaks in the distance. But we're going to be heading over that way today up and if my calculations are correct over Mambarrasdale just there or it could be that way it depends how my bearings are either way it's going to be good there's Jamie from HQ handing out the last few trackers five seconds it will start to beat that means I'll get sent the message but there'll be delay on it not instant a few minutes we don't expect an immediate response but it will be coming if you need to and send a message. So these are the yellow brick trackers that we use on the BTU events and they've got two-way messaging built in. So the crew at HQ can uh, send messages to people if they're off, off course or runners can call for help, they can press the SOS button. You'll come out of here, you'll head past the village hall and you'll go around the loop. You'll keep an eye out for the flags Okay, it is flagged, you just need to make sure you're keeping your eye out. That whole loop is 24k. Okay, so you'll come back to the village hall where the first checkpoint will be and they will have water for you there. So you don't need to top up as much as you go around, leave full and then you'll have enough to go around. As you come back into Inverine, that's all the Woodland Trust area that all the trees are getting planted, so that's a pretty cool place. Please don't stand on them. They've marked through mounds and things. We can't be doing with kicking them down as we're planting them. Once you come into Inverie, you'll go to checkpoint one and you'll take a left up by a mossy wall. It'll be flagged and you'll come over this way. You see the snowy Munro in the distance there? You'll head towards that. You're not going over it, but you'll go over a pass there, okay? So Will and I are out ahead of the runners. We've stopped in this stunning location here. I mean, there's, there's plenty of stunning locations um, to take the first uh, few images of the, the lead pack coming through. Go on, Matt, nice one. Lovely. You're flying. It's a nice temperature. Oh, whoo. Good morning. Well done, buddy. Well done, you're right. All good. Run, but we thought, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the 
<laughs> Get to the first checkpoint. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good one. Thank you. We've just driven round to the next location, up through the woods from Inverry itself. And Will's going to wait here and get people coming over the top. I'm going to head back down now and do some more logistical duties. There's a nice trail. Some nice bumpy and challenging bits, actually. That's challenging for the runners. <laughs> the Hilux, um, has no problem at all with this uh, trail. I was just saying to Will a little while ago um, that I would much rather have a Hilux than a Defender. Now hear me out. <laughs> Defenders are cool. I did my mechanics apprenticeship at a Land Rover garage, so um, was working on Defenders all the time. But the Hilux are just so, more, so much more practical to drive around. All the mod cons, extremely capable off-road. And yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I know it's not a Defender, but... Give me the Hilux from Back to the Future. Yeah, that'd be cool. So my job for about 45 minutes or so is to head around and collect the flags. I'll try and do this with the camera in the hand. We'll be doing this for just a short time until I have to head up and over the hill and then Jamie from HQ will get on e-bike and collect the rest. I mean, just look at that. That's pretty stunning, eh? Got a much better system now. Yeah. Heading on out to point where I'm about halfway time-wise and then I'll just turn around come back the other way and get the ones on the opposite side of the road and like I say Jamie will head out on the e-bike and collect further on or any that I've missed I'm not gonna miss it the uh, Kulin Ridge there on the Isle of Skye just about see it through the mist and cloud, not quite as clear as it was a few days ago. Quite a hole building up there. We're almost at the end of the road now. Road in inverted commas, but great stuff. Some traffic on the road here. <laughs> Look at that guy or girl. I am speechless, absolutely speechless. Such a stunning place. Been to the Highlands many times, been to the islands before, but uh, yeah, Noidar is something special. I can see why Nick, Chris, and Beyond the Ultimate decided to bring a race out here. The most important thing about this is though, that they work with the community for the greater good to help plant trees to help bring uh, tourism to the area but in a managed way obviously um, such a great place I've kind of fallen in love with it a little bit over these last few days the people here are so nice and I've said it before just over eight months ago, I was in a job that I didn't like. I'd been in that job for around about 18 years in various roles, but at the same company. It was good for me. If you've watched my YouTube channel for a while, um, it allowed me to get out wild camping and adventuring on my days off, and it was great, but yeah, it was a little bit soul destroying, the job itself in the end and made some great friends over the years and then all of a sudden comes this opportunity out of the blue for an absolute shift in life basically and you know what partially 
quite heavily, quite weighted quite in favour of the fact that I got this job because of YouTube. All those years of plugging away, making the videos and doing it for the enjoyment, but I've put a good 12, 15 years into making videos for the memories and all of a sudden this comes along. You never know who is watching. You really do not know. <sighs> Lost for words. Lost for words. I've made it to Invergusran. Or at least that is how I think you pronounce it. Inver, meaning the mouth of a river. Please don't shoot me. I learned that from Billy Connolly's World Tour of Scotland many moons ago. <laughs> so if it's not right, blame the big in. This is my turnaround point. Nick is currently cycling over the top through the valley there um, on the e-bike. So 3K in and I'm gonna turn around. He's gonna get everything to the east of the deer fence. Last one. Back we go. The Hilux is on the hill up there, almost back. And it's time to collect the flags from the roadside for about two or three kilometers. We're on the way heading via Mam Barrasdale, the little saddle, over into the next valley and to Barrasdale where checkpoint two is and then we'll be sweeping all the way to Kinloch Horn. The weather is a little bit changeable at the minute, um, but I'm looking forward to this. The contours on the map look spectacular. Part of the plantation that's being done here on Noidart to regenerate the woodland that's been lost over hundreds of years. Logging and heavy grazing. You may have seen yesterday, if I chose to include it, um, the deer carcass in the back of the trailer. So the deer are managed around this part of the peninsula simply because they will just eat absolutely everything and I imagine um, there's going to be people with particular views for or against uh, culling the deer. Um, I'm going to remain totally neutral, but I can see um, the reason why they want to exclude them from this part of uh, the area, simply because they don't stand a chance of regenerating it, um, bringing back the, uh, the woodland if the deer are here in such numbers. Stunning day today. Yeah, it's a little bit wet, but we're not worried about that. Reminds me very much of my first day on the TGO challenge last year. Um, coming out of Dorney, heading over um, towards the east. It was um, local torrential grain that day, but it's not so bad today. That's Mam Barrasdale, the lowest point just there, right where the water has fallen on the lens. Here we are, Mam Barrasdale. What was that? Just telling the people at home we're at Mam Barrasdale. <laughs> what a climb. Something else, isn't it? it? Certainly is. We're about to descend down into Barrasdale Bay. Uh, having come out of Embury, around the year, that is Lunabane, over there, that is Larvan, can't actually see Larvan, but it's up there, and over there, Mealbury, so there are the three very well known Munros in this part of the world, and we're about to pop over the top of Manbarsdale and down. Sure, why? A lot of sense. Barbecue with fish.
the view down to Barrowsdale is absolutely stunning. We've picked up the guys from Checkpoint 2 and we're heading around to Kenlock Horn now, about another 11 kilometres. It's a bit undulating, I'm led to believe. It looks that way on the map, to be fair. I'm doing a shift carrying the medical bag as well. Now that's a view. Looking good. Okay. Well done, guys. Oh. Mark's going for it. Welcome back. It's now day two of the Highland Ultra 2023. And James and I, James is one of the medics, we are sweeping from the start to CP2 today. Uh, James will stop at CP1 and Sam, another medic, medic, will join me to CP2. So picking up flags as we go and basically just having a lovely old time in the Highlands. The weather is pretty reasonable at the moment. Yesterday it was, uh, it was dree, as the Scots would call it. Um, it rained most of the day, uh, most of the afternoon anyway, but it was still spectacular. I mean, you saw from some of the videos, it was amazing. We were following at the back of the pack again and we didn't get in until about half past 10, something like that. So. Quick food, quick uh, debrief, and then you may have seen I just slept in the van. <laughs> Although there was a perfectly dry tent for me to sleep in, but uh, I just thought, my stuff's in the van, I'll just put my bivvy in the van with my mat and my uh, sleeping bag and just chill in there, and that's what I did. We were up at about five o'clock, um, getting things ready for the runners, and yeah, thankfully no rain but it's clearing slowly. We're heading up to the, uh, the saddle, to the ridge line there, uh, and I'm not. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it. So here's the name. That's why I'm not gonna attempt to pronounce it, because <laughs> we've been calling it something else. Um, yeah, CP1 is just over the ridge line and down in the valley there. So it's around about half past 10 now and the runners set off just after seven o'clock. James and I set off just after six to get to the top of the first climb. Um, I'm carrying two bags because James has got the big medics bag. <laughs> Just crossed the river and I'm almost at CP1 now. One of the last runners is being withdrawn at CP1 simply because of time. Uh, there's not going to be enough time for him to get to CP2, never mind the end. So.
turns out I'm off the hook. I'm going to head back down to the vehicle at the road there. Um, one of the other medics has gone over to collect some of the flags and we're going to fetch him at CP2. So, yeah, what a day. <laughs> what an amazing route this is. Nick, who designed the course, um, well, hats off, seriously. Um, it's amazing, it really is. Some challenging sections on that first bit, to be honest, but it'd be nice to come back and run it. I've said it now, haven't I? No. It'd be nice to come back and move over it a little bit quicker. Right, pack my stuff and get down to the car and get back to camp. Quite looking forward to some food, but as always on these adventures, I'm craving chips, so. <laughs> Bicycle is the the slowest the 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 Five, four, three, two, one. Have fun, guys. Well done, guys. And we are packed away. The dream team don't mess about. I mean, the runners did help pack the uh, back of the tents, but Can't I've done the rest. Let's get to Malay and then over to Inverie for the festivities. And we are back. Back at Inverie. We um, packed up the camp that you just saw earlier on in Kinloch Horn drove around as uh, legally as quickly as we could to uh, Malag to make the 215 boat and we made it with like 10 minutes to spare thankfully and I'm heading to the finish line just dropped my stuff off at the bunkhouse a few runners have already come through so time to get clapping for the guys that are still arriving heading over Man Bowersdale right in the distance we were going to bring them over the uh, the ridge here, but the wind has just been too ferocious today. Onwards.
relationship forming here, and that's always nice to have on a race. Uh, but we've seen uh, one of the runners is new uh, to, to, well, both the runners are new to this race, they've never done it before, and you would think that they've been running around this kind of stuff all their life because they kind of just gracefully went across it and found it, or well, made it look very easy. That's Axel and Fred. Been watching the sea lap at this little uh, sculpture whilst the tide's been in for the last few days. So just thought I'd come and check it out. Supposedly, it's an alien. Stretch tank going down. Good morning. It's the final, final day. The race finished yesterday, as you've just seen, and it's time for the runners to depart. We had a great night last night. Um, quite a late one, actually. Potentially a little bit worse for wear this morning, but when the caffeine kicks in, all will be fine. Um, stayed up till gone midnight on the beach with a fire, all that sort of stuff. All good. Um, and down to uh, Kat's expert timing, we put the big stretch tent down. You may have just seen a small clip of that. Um, we literally we finished it literally seconds before it started raining so that will save me and uh, the team back at the office a a huge job having to air that thing out uh, yeah anyway um uh, let's go and pack some more tents down and get the runners ready for the boat oh they've packed the tents down there's about six tents left be a very easy day for us today. Well, I can foresee um, maybe a few beers uh, sat at the table around the corner there. Time for one final coffee. What a view. How's the van going? We'll be on in two seconds. No messing about. That is it. We're over in Malig now. The van is safely off the Spanish John and we're going to go and say goodbye to the Western Isles cruisers people and then get on the road. About seven or eight hours back to Sheffield, but it's been an absolutely amazing week. Um, met some great people, had a good laugh and uh, yeah, looking forward to next year. Right, all, that left, all that's left to say is Thank you for watching.
I'll speak to you again very soon. Bye for now.